Welcome. Today's lesson is on judging barley. To start this video today, I'd like to start with some, just some general information, like for instance, um, barley is a member of the grass family, which means they have parallel venation in their leaves. Also, they have swollen joints called the nodes where the leaves attach. It's also part of, of course, the grain family. Grain family is part of the grass family. The difference is when the seeds become mature, uh, they're kind of hardened, they're small, and some of them have a fibrous kind of coat called a hull. Uh, it's used primarily um, uh, for human as well as animal consumption. And uh, we use a malted type of a barley uh, for distilled beverages. And then also uh, breads and those kinds of, of, uh, of food is also consumed by humans. And there are two basic types of barley, a two row and then of course the six row barley, kind of where all the florets line up in, in certain rows. So uh, this is what uh, barley looks like. Um, the florets are a nice, clean, neat rows. And of course they have ons on them as well. So what do we look for? Well, what are we looking for basically are, first of all, their sound. You'd like to see 97 to 99 or 100% that are sound. That means they're not broken, they're not cracked, or they're plump, they're lustrous, they're uh, been uh, full of carbohydrates. Yeah. Another thing is we're looking for damaged uh, seed. What we mean by damaged seed, they could be damaged in a variety of ways. We have some breaks possibly in them, uh, them some slips, some cracks, those kind of things. Now here's an example of a damage as well. This is insect damage. Also could be things like uh, a fungal damage as well. Then when we get to heat damage, they look something like this. Heat damage is when the, the kernels are stored primarily when there's a little bit too much moisture and then they start to ferment and break down turn kind of a reddish black color like these here the other thing that we're looking for is any foreign material anything that's not barley in this case well it's weeds this happens to be a noxious weed that being field bindweed so we're looking for anything that's not actual plant it could be stems it could be some of the hulls that would be considered foreign material and then we also have broken kernels. And when we're talking about broken kernels, they'll kind of look like this. Um, those are uh, uh, parts of the actual seed or kernel that have been broken off. Sometimes they've been skinned or, or um, broken, those kinds of things, and we're looking for in the sample. And here are some broken kernels, and typically the tips or the apex of them have been broken off. And of course, a variety. It's kind of been a kind of controversial topic because uh, blue barley is one that we're really looking for. And in some countries, they can't have any barley at all. I mean, blue barley at all in the sample. Um, however, here in the United States, we allow a little bit uh, of leeway, especially if it's just feed barley, primarily be because it's really hard to tell because sometimes it's definitely genetic but it's also sometimes actually environmental if it's too cold or rain too much sometimes they just kind of appear so it's really hard to control at, at some point in time but definitely we don't like to, to see blue barley and malted uh, barley because blue barley has a little bit more protein which might give it a different characteristic or taste and that's what a blue barley looks like. It has kind of a darkened color underneath the hull. And when the hull's removed, you can see that kind of bluish color. So now what we're going to do is going to give you three minutes to take a look at some of the samples. We have some stills as well as video. And we'll come right back in about three minutes. Thanks.
In my first plate today, I put plate number two. Two is a very sound, plump, and lustrous seed. I believe this has probably the best condition of the seed in all the class today. It was free from any kind of a defect. It was free from any variety of varietal changes. Uh, and also, I think it was the, probably the uh, one that will have the most amount of germination rate as well as seed vigor in the field today. I think this one will also uh, bring uh, the uh, grower a uh, bigger profit, primarily because it was free from any kind of dockage. When we take a look at our second place plate, I believe it was number four. A sample number four was also a very clean sample, but I have to criticize it and put it in second because it had a few more uh, broken kernels, also had a common weed, that being pigweed. Now, that's not a very difficult weed to clean out of, of this sample, but I still think it's a little bit more dockage that has to uh, be taken away from the grower's profit. I also um, believe that this particular seed will also do well but I just don't think it uh, measures up to the quality and condition of plate number two, which is our first plate today. Uh, coming in third place today was plate number one. I think it was a pretty obvious uh, bottom pair, primarily because it had a varietal difference in it. It has some blue barley. Uh, blue barley uh, can uh, change the overall condition as well as uh, the uniformity of this particular sample. A lot of uh, growers, and in particular millers, would rather s not see blue barley in there because it does have a little bit higher percentage rate. Uh, it can discolor some of the, uh, the seed, uh, but also I think it would be a, a kind of problematic to get rid of since it's a type of uh, a seed that has uh, some genetic as well as environmental concerns that we have to take into account. So for this reason, I put plate number one in third place. And then on uh, number four, I grant that this was a very clean uh, type of seed. If it wasn't for the criticism that I have, which it, it has a, a noxious weed, that being field bindweed. It's a restricted noxious weed, which was, is going to restrict the sales of this particular lot of seed. Um, I, I, I think it's a very sound seed, but I have to put it in, in last place because of this noxious weed. So, for these reasons, I place this class of barley in the order of 2, 4, 1, and 3. So, to, to uh, recount or to take a look at it one more time, we have a 2, 4, 1, 3 standing with cuts of 2, 6, and 4. Um, the first pair, uh, there was a, if you flipped around, it'd only be a two point deduction. Um, but if you got the middle uh, pair wrong, like for instance, we, I, I just really thought that the, the common weed, that being pigweed, was a, a much more benign type of thing than, than we had the change in variety, which was the blue barley. So that would have been a bigger cut. And then, of course, um, we should, you should have been able to see the difference between a variety and noxious weeds, because those are the things that you have to be careful of. So my thought for the day, when your word speaks for itself, don't interrupt. There are times in our lives that all we really need to do is, is put the work in. And when we put the work in, it pretty much speaks for itself. And in particular, I hope your work will speak for yourself at the next contest. See you then. Thanks. Bye.